World Cancer Day, which is a sort of odd um, thing. I've not heard of it before. No, but I've not heard of it. But I'll tell you who it made me think of. Do you remember Nancy Carter Bradley, who we had on the show a couple of years ago? We had her on a couple of times, actually, um, and she had a brain tumour, and she was promoting fundraising. Ah, and... I do remember her. Now, she died about oh. six months ago, something like that. And... And it's people like that you just think, and she tried all these different options and she, she'd had treatment, it'd mm. come back and all sorts of things. Well, and she and was, was a lovely lady. I was saying earlier that when I went to... Uh, I had a load of uh, update treatments um, uh, over the week and uh, I was in an oncology waiting room and it was so packed. You had to wait standing by the wall for a, a seat to become empty just to be able to sit down in the waiting room. And, um, and this was a posh oncology waiting room in Harley Street and it, there were, it was so packed to the rafters with people and I sat there and I looked around all of the people who were sort of going in ahead of me and I thought how many people have cancer if this is it was just like awful it's terrible they reckon one in two don't they well, well they said we'll it's good it to get lifetime. to one in two yeah I think, I think we've hit it I do think we've hit it. Which is why it's important to talk about it today, mm. to raise awareness so that we're all uh, reminded to um, get to know our bodies and keep an eye on ourselves and go to the doctor if we're worried in any way at all. But, of course, what is also going on with all this, and we, we keep our fingers crossed, we hope and pray for, for cures and, and, and better treatments, don't we? Huge amounts of work is going on, and every now and then we get a little glimpse of a breakthrough but not an immediate breakthrough. And the um, talk is of this cancer vaccine, mm. uh, which is being trialled now. It's at that stage. Really fascinating. And we're joined now by an oncologist uh, who is actually in, w with one of those trials, Dr David Pinato. Hi. Hello. Hello. We're hoping you can explain this to us. Yes. Because we, we always think of a vaccine as an injection or whatever you get to prevent you getting a disease. But this isn't to prevent cancer at this stage, it's to treat it? Correct. This is a completely different type of treatment, not a preventative one. It's what we call a therapeutic vaccine. So it is an mRNA-based vaccine, which has a technology that is very similar to the one that was used to combat COVID-19 during the pandemic. And the way it works is by being injected in patients who already have cancer. The objective of the trial, first of all, is to see whether it's safe, it's deliverable, whether it does its job in terms of helping clearing the cancer, sometimes together with type of treatments that are being used routinely in the NHS to kill cancer, such as immunotherapy. And the idea is to give the body precise information, make it easier for the body to recognise and see the cancer cells, which are normally hidden. So, it, so in that sense, it's a, it's a vaccine in that it is telling the body to attack the cancer, so that it's our own bodies which do the work. Correct. Think of it as a pre-packaged instruction, so it's an instruction booklet that the body can read and then use against cancer itself. That sounds incredible. Do you have to tailor it to each patient in some way, or at least tailor it to the type of cancer they have? That's a very clever question, because there are two ways of developing cancer vaccines. One is a personalised way, whereby you take a piece of the, of, of the cancer spot itself, and then you have to do a lot of analysis in the lab, and then you make a vaccine that is specific to that particular patient, which is a personalised approach, or, such as in this trial that we, have, we are experimenting at Imperial College, uh, you can have a broad, off-the-shelf type of product. Uh, it's actually interesting because we probably need to develop both ways of treating cancer with vaccines. An off-the-shelf approach will be easier for patients. You can imagine that you know, people would require treatment quite quickly, and sometimes we don't have the time to, to do and, all these tests. And cheaper, it's going and to be cheaper. said. Yeah, that's true. And, and less um, of a problem... Um, for less invasive than surgery, particularly if surgery is just not possible. You think of the, there must be some sorts of cancer where it's widespread, you can't operate on all of the tumours, or in the case of the brain or something, you can't get to the tumour. Correct. So at this very moment, the trial is looking at patients who have unfortunately exhausted all treatment options. So people where the standard options such as surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy haven't really fully worked to eradicate their cancer. And you know, even though we are doing a lot of progress and we've made a lot of progress since the 70s, um, you know, we are actually seeing that there is still a proportion of patients in whom standard treatment doesn't work. So, all right. So bearing that in mind, and these trials are underway, what results are you seeing so far? So at the moment, we are seeing that these vaccines are 
not just the one that we're trolling, but in general, in cancer medicine, they're reshaping the landscape in a way. So they're making immunotherapy, which has perhaps been one of the greatest advancements in cancer medicine over the past 10 or 15 years, more tailored. They're broadening the reach of cancer immunotherapy. Uh, we know how important the immune system is in terms of combating cancer. Mm. Um, traditionally, we've always killed cancer cells by using chemotherapy, so it's very harsh treatment that basically also sometimes deteriorates the quality of life of patients. We now know that immunotherapy is safe to give. It has really revolutionized the way we treat a lot of cancers that before were untreatable. I'm thinking melanoma, skin cancer, lung cancer. The vaccines are probably going to make that even better by making it more specific. And so does it... Does it reduce the tumour? Can it actually get rid of the tumour? So that is still premature to say. Uh, what we're trying to see is whether there is any reduction in the size of the tumour. So when patients come to us, they will have a scan before the treatment. They will have a scan after a few weeks. We'll check whether or not the vaccine would have had the chance of shrinking the cancer down and maybe keeping it at bay. Uh, but for us to say cure, you know, we'll really have to think about making people cancer free and I think at this point it's too premature for us to say that. Okay but even in terms of, of reducing a tumour and improving life, I mean over, over what sort of time period are you looking? So normally people can remain on trial until we as physicians that treat them on trial feel that there is benefit and so most of the time they can come back every sort of two to three months having repeat scans, remain on checkup. And, and they, so forgive me, are they, are they staying on a treatment during that period of time? So daily injection or something like that? Yeah, so it's not really daily, it's mostly like three or four weekly, so it's not that troublesome for patients to come back to clinic that often. But, you know, thinking about the other alternatives for these patients, who, as we said, you know, they really have exhausted everything else that was out there. It's actually quite remarkable. As an oncologist yourself, it must be very exciting because you could be on the brink of something that really is going to make a huge difference. Exactly. And I would want to emphasise that without research, you know, we wouldn't even have the current standard treatments that are currently available in the NHS. So for us, there is a lot of excitement in bringing this forward. Yeah.